Welcome back. Today we're going to tie my absolute favorite caddis larva pattern. Very simple, very easy pattern to tie. Um, you can tie a box full of these in no time. Um, very quick pattern to tie. It's not going to be quick because I'm going to be talking through it on this one. But um, we're going to go through and show you the pattern that I fished a ton when I was a kid um, back in Pennsylvania fishing the limestones and everything. Um, there got to a certain point um, March, late March, early April when the granums really get going. Even into May before the sulfurs get, get hitting too awful heavy. This is such an effective pattern. I mean I always fish multiple nymphs when I'm fishing Usually I'll have a bottom fly, you know, and one or two tags coming off the top. There were certain times of the year where this would be all I would fish. I would have three of this pattern on and it, it would just light them up. And like I said, it's a very quick, easy pattern to tie. Um, even out west, you know, anywhere you have caddis, um, this is going to be an effective pattern. But I mean, I just know that they were so prolific in Pennsylvania. Um, you'd step out of the river and you would have you know a couple dozen just sitting on your waders and pick them off and you know that's when i would pick them and i'd take them home and try and duplicate them just perfectly and everything i don't worry about them being perfect anymore i get them suggestive not necessarily imitative but um i'm gonna run through this one pretty quick here but uh this is just a quick Caddis larva. This is a uh, Daiichi 1160 that I'm using for the hook. This is a clink hammer. Um, it's a dry fly hook. You'll see the clinks and everything that are really popular. Um, a lot of the parachute. So it's a really light wire hook, but I like the overall shape to it. If you want to use just a curved caddis or an egg hook, whatever it may be. Um, that it worked just fine as well. The clinks are a little tricky to tie on because they have such an aggressive curve to them, but they are a phenomenal imitation of these caddis in my opinion. So what I do on this, how I measure these out or how I gauge where my start and stop point is um, because I'm not going off of the barbell hook like it is on the streamers or everything, I just take an imaginary line, I draw it from the eye of my hook straight back and that's where I stop my thread. Get a quick thread base down and then I just run this back close to the front, not all the way because I don't want to rush this eye too much, I want to keep that nice and clean. And then I'm just going to take, this is just some four pound, um, Trilene that I've had sitting around for years. I couldn't tell you the last time I fished trilene. So you can see I have this little section right there to where I'm I'm clear. I don't have anything but thread. I just want to tie that in and I'm gonna work that all the way back on my side. And I can stop just short of where my thread is. I'll try and zoom in when I edit this one to highlight this, but I have just a little bit of extra hanging off there. Um, or it's just a little bit short of where I stopped with my thread. And then when I counter wrap this, what I'm going to do is bring this in completely around and then it's going to be a nice segmented body. If you look at the bodies on these things, they're very segmented. Um, but I want it pointing straight to me. I don't want it spiraled like I'll do with like a pheasant tail or any other rib like that. I want it a nice even segmentation throughout the entirety of the body or throughout the entirety of the fly, I should say. So now what we're going to do before we go any further is I'm just going to take and tie in my shell back on this and I'm just going to use, this is, um, eighth inch uh, scud back. Not my preferred material to use. 
Um, I prefer to use the thin skin. Um, it's a little bit more rigid than this. I mean, this is, it's just rubber essentially is all it is, but it's very pliable and it's, I don't know, it kind of, it, it has a tendency to want to shift around on you a little bit and your mono can catch it and flip it a little bit easier than it will the thin skin. Another option you have is this um, minnow skin. This is a mottled olive. Um, it has some neat colors and everything to it throughout. Um, I like the one solid color over the back, um, but it, it's entirely personal preference, whatever you want to use. But before I started filming, I looked for probably 45 minutes or so trying to find that damn thin skin and for the life of me, I cannot find it. I have materials in the back room. I have a chest under here. I've got them behind the uh, fly rack back there. I've got materials everywhere and I got one pack of it. So it was a little bit mission impossible really is what it was. I couldn't find the stuff. And one of two things need to happen. I need to cut down all materials or I need to get more room to hang everything up because my pegboards are full back there and I can tell you which one's not going to happen. I'm not going to cut down all materials. So I need to get more room. Well, Maddie's getting a little drink back there. So I'm just going to tie this stuff in going right down the back. And you can see I have that right down the center. Let me flip this around. That is going right down the center for me. So when I turn this around and I go with my shell back, it's going to be going right down that middle portion. You can see I had a little bit. Always flip this up and take a look before you just start tying the body in. I have a little bit where I need to go back. So I just stretch this slightly and I work my thread all the way to the back. I'm gonna bring this around now, get this out of my way because I don't want to tie that in entirely with everything else because like I said, I want that nice segmentation and I want to be able to make that an even, not a spiral. And I'm gonna go just one more wrap back, make sure that I'm not capturing my mono Get over here. Get over here. There we go. We have everything nice and even right there. Flip this back around and make sure that you don't have any thread on that back side. We're in good shape right there. Everything looks good. Everything looks clean. Now I'm gonna take and tie my body material in. You have some options on this. You can dub it just a straight whatever you want to use whether it's possum or super fine if you want to use some antron and spin it and make some coils out of it um, if that's the way you want to do your segmentation that's fine as well what I settled on years ago was this cactus chenille and this is midge I mean it it has some reflective property in it I, I just I, I love this stuff I mean this this is what I use almost exclusively um, I'm just going to tie this in to where it is just the, just the cotton. I may have caught a little bit right there. I'm going to come a little bit further back on this as well. There we go. Now we have a nice even section right there. Another thing that you can use is this furry foam right here. Um, I like it. It's 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 good. Um, I'll use it more so on the bigger flies, like a, probably a 12 and up. But I mean, you really don't see a whole lot of caddis 12 and above. 14 is probably the biggest. 14 is the most common, especially for the grams back home um, here out west. 14 would probably be on the bigger side. Uh, of what you would see, but like I said, I am a big fan of this midge cactus chenille, so that's typically what I'll I'll use. 
Now, next up on this is I'm gonna build just a little bump in the center. If you look at these things, they are a little thinner at the front and the back and the center section's a little bit heavier. Um, I'm gonna create just a little bit of a bump here and it's gonna be very slight. You can completely omit this step if you want to. Um, it's not necessary at all, but I just like the way that it looks and I'm gonna contradict myself here in a little bit when I explain about why I don't tie the legs in. Yeah, let me back that off just a little bit. There we go. Now I'm gonna run some thread wraps through there, just kind of firm that up a little bit. And it's gonna be very minimal. Um, you're barely gonna notice this, but it's something that I like to do. It just beefs that center section up a little bit. And then that front section, like I said, is slender like the back. So now I'm just going to take and use my rotary function here. And nice even wraps all the way to the front. I'm going to fill out this body section. And you can start to see that little bit of a bump develop there. It's a little bit thicker than that back section. I mean, it's very minimal, to be honest. And like I said, if you want to skip that step, you absolutely can. But I like throwing that section in there. I just like the way that it looks. So now, we're going to go and just tie this off right here. We're gonna clean this section up and then we're gonna work on the head portion of this fly. So now I'm gonna reset my fly and device to where I'm working on a level plane right here. Sometimes you can do it, um, especially if you run a bead head on there. That's one of the easiest ways to tie this. You just throw a matte black bead head on there and you run your um, cactus chenille right up to the head, call it good right there. I'm doing this one without a bead. I, the bead, um, I, I don't fish a ton of beads anymore. Um, I used to, a bunch of different weights and sizes and all that stuff. I got away from it. I don't really do it much anymore, like I was saying. But you've got some options, once again, for the head. You can use this cactus chenille in black again or another thing that I like to use is this ostrich plume. And I'm just gonna take one plume of it. And I'm gonna tie it in from the tip. It just, I don't know, it, it, it just gives a different look to the fly. Um, adds a little bit of fuzziness to the front. And if you look at these caddis, Let me get that tied in before I keep running my mouth there. If you look at these caddis, they have, in the very front, they have their legs that they're using to crawl around and everything with. Um, this can kind of be imitative of it. It's absolutely not necessary. If you want to throw just a straight dubbing on there, that would be completely fine. The legs probably come back to about here. Um, I'm not throwing the legs in. I'm not getting that picky on this. I don't want to spend extra time. If I lose this fly, I don't want to be pissed that I spent five extra minutes throwing legs in that fish aren't even going to realize. If fish are turning flies down because they don't see the legs on them, we're all in trouble. So I skip it. I go with this ostrich or I go with the uh, cactus chenille again. So I'm just gonna make a couple of turns right here. Nothing too aggressive. Definitely don't pull tight on this, uh, on these plumes. Cause they'll snap on you in a, in a heartbeat. My fat fingers are being a disadvantage here again. What happened? There we go. We'll try this again. Just making the wrap 
one right in front of the other just to fill this head section out a little bit. <laughs> this is why I typically use the cactus chenille. It's more user friendly. I'll try this one more time. There's not going to be anything left of this feather by the time I'm done with it. Alright, we're going to abort that. We're going to go back to another section here. And I'm just going to use two pieces, which is what I should have done from the beginning. I should have just used two pieces instead of one. But I figured I'd try and get cute. So how that worked out for me. Alright, once again, we're just going to tie these in. Wrap right over the top there. That's looking better already. I'm going to stop just in front of that eye. get rid of those. Hmm. Show up with the cactus. Show up with the cactus. Alright, let's back some of this thread off here because I'm starting to get a little bulky. See what I get for trying to make a fly look prettier on film. I'll end up making a mess out of it. That's all right, it gives me more time to talk about flies. So here we go again. Third time's a charm. That thing. Mono wants to keep coming with me here, so. All right, we're gonna stop that just shy of the eye on our hook there. And before I cut that, I'm just gonna throw a quick knot in there. That way I don't have to worry about that stuff falling off on me again. So, like I was saying, the one thing about these clink hooks that make them a little difficult is there is such an aggressive bend on them, they can make things a little bit difficult there for a while if you're not resetting your hook all the time. I just tried to fight it and I lost. So now I'm going to pull this over. I'm stretching this pretty aggressively, not to the point where I'm going to break it, but I'm stretching that shell back to where it's not going to have any bumps or anything throughout the body of it. And I'm just going to tie this off. I'm going to go one, two. I'm going to pick this up. I still have a nice clean eye. And once again, because this hook tends to want to fall around on you, or your thread tends to want to fall off of that hook, I'm just going to throw a quick knot in there. Make sure that that's secure. And then I'm going to cut that off. Now, like I was saying about that segmentation, my, my mono is already in the position that I want it. And I'm just going to go one wrap. You can see, well, hopefully you can see, that it's 
it's a straight over the top wrap it's not a spiral and then I'm just gonna segment this all the way up to the front four and then I'll get one more right in front of my eye you gotta watch this stuff I'm a little out of practice on these if you can't tell you gotta watch this mono it gets pretty slick on you and tying on these angles with that clink hook like I was saying before makes it a little challenging but we got it squared away this time now we're going to trim that off I'm going to go with just a three turn whip finish we're good to go alright make sure that my shell back still running down my center everything looks pretty good there um, this isn't as dark as I would like it the the one that I typically use is a lot darker so if you want to you can just take your marker here and touch this up give a little bit of extra color to that shell back I like them a really dark olive but I, like I said couldn't find that thin skin so this is what we're going to be working with today and then I'm going to touch this up with a little bit of extra black and then the last thing I do before I call this one good because we're using that mono on there sometimes you'll get a tooth in that mono and it'll tear it up pretty bad. I'm just gonna take my bodkin, I'm gonna get a little bit of UV and go right off of this, right over this top here. That's gonna bring that segmentation to life a little bit more as well. Just going right over that shell back. touch that with the torch we're good to go minus the ostrich plumes and the mono fighting me a little bit that one turned out half decent for not tying one of these in a couple of years but you can see underneath here you have that little hint of a leg um, not necessary whatsoever you can completely go with just the black cactus chenille and it's it's going to catch fish just fine for you but I figured would go with the ostrich three times instead of one um, just to uh, highlight another thing that you're able to do with that pattern but there is my absolute favorite caddis larva nymph right there caddis larva pattern um, if you guys have any questions or comments if you want to tell me that I suck and I can't work with ostrich stick to streamers Go ahead and leave them in the comments. I won't give a shit. Anyhow, thanks as always for watching, and we will catch you next Wednesday.